Disclaimer, we do not claim the outcome of this fictional fight to be factual. Any battle could end with any outcome, depending on the circumstances. We are just simply choosing the most likely outcome and the one that will fit the most circumstances. So be kind in the comments and remember that we love you. Enjoy the video. Fictional fight rules! No prep time. No outside help unless it is a major part of the character, like Pikachu and Ash, Jack and Daxter, or Gara and his mother, San. Non-canon events will be included so we can add Evil Ryu, Dark Spine Sonic, and more, but to keep from going overboard, spin-offs like Super Smash Bros. and Project X Zone will not be included. Welcome back to Fictional Fights. Man, you guys must really love us since the last video earned over 200 views in less than 48 hours. I'd consider that a good start. So as such, we will now be challenging Rayman and Spyro to take on each other in the arena. The Fiery Fighter versus the Limbless Legend. Which of these purple protagonists of the PlayStation will come out on top? Let's find out. This is Fictional Fights. It was a peaceful time in the Dragon Realm. Dragons and dragonflies lived together in harmony. Life was perfect, until thieves show up and began to steal the eggs of the dragons and dragonflies. I don't know why though, those scaly creatures do not look tasty. Maybe they're valuable or something. One thief made it off with a dragon egg and a dragonfly egg, when suddenly, the dragon egg began to heat up and eventually burst into flames. Spyro hatched with his lifelong companion Sparks the Dragonfly and scared the pants off that thief. And Spyro has been stopping thieves ever since. Together, Spyro and Sparks have been stopping thieves from stealing dragon eggs. Not just thieves though, Spyro has saved his land countless times from evil sorcerers who wish to disrupt the peace. And how did he do this? With his awesome fire breath of course! It's not just fire breath though, Spyro also has ice and lightning breath that he can use to freeze or zap enemies. He can also charge and ram into enemies with his horns like a mad bull. With his charge ability, he can ram into solid metal, smashing it instantly. But if it's too tough to break, he could still hit it, knocking his opponents in the face. With special power-ups, Spyro was able to make his charge even stronger. With this supercharge, he is able to knock a mech several times his size into the air. And while his fire isn't hot enough to melt solid metal, those power-ups allow him to shoot flaming balls of doom at a rapid pace. He can even create explosions of acid breath! On his own, Spyro's breath cannot melt metal, but with a kiss from a fairy, his breath becomes so hot and powerful, it doesn't just melt metal. It makes it explode! And no, we're not counting this as outside help. Since the fairy has no character traits and its power can be used an unlimited amount of times, it will be labeled as a power-up. Spyro can do things you wouldn't expect a normal dragon to do. He's an expert at swimming and he can... Climb? Why would he even need to do that? He can fly! It's probably just an excuse to give money bags for more of your gems. Lousy, no good con artist. Mm. I'm back! Boo! Ah! Why are you? You! <laughs> <sighs> if only he didn't survive that. Spyro has saved the world on several occasions and survived hits from foes who are levels above Spyro's strength. His dragonfly companion Sparks can protect Spyro from damage. He once protected Spyro from a giant volcanic castle collapsing on top of him. However, without the magical protection of Sparks, Spyro becomes very vulnerable to enemy attacks, so he has to be careful not to lose track of his dragonfly. But even though his defense goes down without Sparks, his strength remains the same. He can charge and break metal and even lift that giant mech that we mentioned earlier, which would take several tons of force. Spyro's magic is no joke either. He once endured the planet crumbling to ruins and used his magic to heal the entire planet. Still not enough magic to heal my stomach after eating Taco Bell though. Yeesh. Spyro is a dragon you don't want to mess with. Don't mess with this bull because you certainly don't want to get his horns. The Glade of Dreams, a peaceful land that is home to the Lums and Electoons. All was well until the land was threatened by a villain named Mr. Dark. Really? The creatures were being captured left and right as Mr. Dark took over the land. So to the rescue came the nymphs, who have the powers of creation. You know, creation! 
the opposite of destruction. Since they couldn't destroy Mr. Dark themselves, they did the next best thing and created a hero who could. That hero is Rayman. Hey! <laughs> Maybe he could teach me to do that. <sighs> what am I gonna do with you? Rayman did his job and beat Mr. Dark by punching him with his floating hands. He also has floating feet and a floating head. I wonder if he has a floating t Moving on, there is more to Rayman's fist than just punching. You see, since his hands can float, it allows him to have massive range. He can punch foes from long distances and even shoot rays out of his hands. Oh, I was wondering where his name came from. Rayman has many power-ups to help him do all kinds of different things with his punches. First is the heavy metal fist, which grants him the ability to break through doors. This one's pretty much useless though, since Rayman oranges Oranges. Rayman Oranges. Rayman Oranges. Rayman Oranges. That sounds better. <laughs> Damn it. Since Rayman Origins, Rayman has been able to break through doors on his own. He has the Vortex power-up where he can create platforms and shrink enemies. His lockjaw turns his fist into metal teeth that he can use to bite enemies or use as a grappling hook. He can glide by spinning his hair or even fly if he uses the throttle copter. Last but not least is the Shock Rocket, a guided missile that he can control. Rayman is strong enough to break metal cages and agile enough to run and jump on walls and ceilings. He can also collect super golden gloves that double his strength, so that way he could break two metal cages. Okay, that's not very impressive. Two metal cages is nothing compared to Rayman's full strength. We may be going 0 to 100 here, but Rayman is so strong that he can punch a teensy and its ships so hard that they fly to another constellation. 0 to 100? More like 0 to a million! The closest constellation is four light years away, and the Teensy made it there in seconds, which means that Rayman punched that Teensy so hard, it traveled over 20 million times the speed of light. And that was without the double strength super glove. If you were to get hit with a punch like that, it would literally knock the atoms out of you, basically turning you into a liquid puddle of sadness. Imagine what he could do to the planet with that kind of punch. Thank goodness he's not a Dragon Ball villain. Rayman has saved the world countless times and even beaten enemies hundreds of times his own size. Despite Rayman's incredible strength, he's weak to things anyone else would be weak to. Spikes, fire, bottomless pits. But his biggest weakness is that his limbs can actually be stolen. <gasps> Maybe that's what happened to his floating di- But, even with those weaknesses, Rayman is still a force of nature. Does Rayman have what it takes to stop Spyro? It's time for a fictional fight! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a quick message. Uh, just please hang on before you get to the fight. The fight that doesn't exist because we don't have animators. That's right, there's no fight this episode. I know we did one last episode, but it was terrible. I'm not a good animator. This episode, we do not have a fight. Uh, instead, we have an announcer or a narrator that will narrate the fight in good detail and an exciting voice. There will be music and whatever. So that way it won't be too boring. But we still need animators because we don't want to do this for the entire series. We want f actual fights too. So if you're an animator, just let us know. Uh, Hand-drawn 3D sprites, I mean 2D sprites, 3D animation, whatever you want. Just let us know. And uh, that's it. We'll get to the fight now. This fight takes place in the Dragon Realm, Spyro's homeworld. It was quite a normal and peaceful day until a stranger shows up, catching all the dragonflies in his hands. He must have mistaken them for loans. Why? Because it's none other than Rayman. Spyro immediately mistakes Rayman for one of Ripto's goons, and he gets ready to attack. Three, two, one, fight! Spyro charges at Rayman, but Rayman quickly leaps out of the way, throwing his first punch, knocking Spyro into a wall. Spyro quickly recovers and charges towards Rayman again. As soon as he gets close, he tries to spray some fire. It burns Rayman who hops in the air, grabbing onto a vine. Rayman starts swinging from tree to tree, kicking Spyro as he passes by. Spyro knows his fire can't go far enough to reach Rayman, so instead he uses a power orb to turn them into projectiles. He starts to fire multiple shots at Rayman, but thanks to Rayman's agility, he is able to dodge them. Rayman leaps from the final vine onto a ledge, thinking Spyro can't follow him there. But what's this? Spyro is climbing! Rayman quickly turns around and notices an ability behind him. It's his lockjaw! He quickly activates it and uses his lockjaw to pinch Spyro's hands and bite them, knocking Spyro back down. Once Spyro realizes that climbing is not the best solution, 
he decides to take to the skies, chasing after Rayman as he flies with his wings. Rayman runs away quickly up a wall, finding his throttle copter there. Rayman tries to evade Spyro, but Spyro follows not too far behind, eventually using Ice Breath to freeze Rayman. Rayman falls down to the ground. His body, hands, and head are thawed, but his feet are still frozen, weighing him down so he can't run. And now Spyro just got a kiss from a fairy! This could be it for Rayman! Spyro lands back down on the ground and prepares to charge. Rayman thinking there is no hope left for him, he does the only thing he knows how to do and starts winding up his fist. Spyro charges! Could this be it for Rayman? It's almost over. Here it goes! It's... It's... Wow! Incredible! The winner is... Rayman! Spyro's fire just couldn't quite reach as far as Rayman's fists, and Rayman was able to punch Spyro, liquefying him. It's all over, folks. What an exciting battle! Does anyone have a mop? We have a spill on aisle. Ouch! Over here! Even though Spyro's power-ups would give him just what he needs to beat Rayman, the problem he had was actually catching Rayman. We did make a pretty big deal about how Spyro can climb and swim, but that was only because those are things that Dragon normally wouldn't do. Rayman can do all that and more. Rayman could run up walls and ceilings to evade Spyro's dangerous ground attacks, like his charge, and his throttle copter could easily help him evade Spyro's flight. Even if Spyro caught up to Rayman, the most his fire can do without power-ups is temporarily heat up metal. It cools down after a few seconds, so it's safe to assume that Spyro's fire breath is equivalent to a regular campfire that you'd roast marshmallows in. Due to Rayman being limbless, he gained the range advantage. He'd be able to attack Spyro from a distance while evading the range of Spyro's attacks. And when it came for Rayman to attack, he could definitely get the job done. Remember, he can punch you four light years away. And that was only because we lowballed the feat to the Teensy being hit to the nearest constellation. He could have gone to any other one. That means Rayman could have hit him way harder than we calculated. And once again, that was without his double strength super glove. I guess Spyro just couldn't take a punch. The winner is Rayman. No problem. Get ready for the next battle.